We are veterans of air travel as members of Congress. So we've all seen the footage of people waiting in line to go through security screening at major airports, particularly in the city of Chicago, <clears throat> both O'Hare and Midway. The lines are so long that people have had to wait two to three hours, two to three hours to go through a security checkpoint. People are angry. I don't blame them. Thousands of people have missed their flights. Some stuck sleeping in the airports overnight. The Commissioner of Aviation, Ginger Evans, told me, we pulled out the cots that we saved for snow emergencies so that people now, in the heat of early summer, are facing the same kinds of delays. Our highest priority, our highest priority is to protect those who travel on our airplanes. But poor planning and inadequate funding have led to alarming delays in airports across America. And in Chicago, we felt it more than most. More needs to be done to fix the problem. That's what I've been working to do. Earlier this week, I talked to the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson on the phone about the next steps. Yesterday, I followed up with a call to the TSA Administrator Peter Neffinger to hear his thoughts. We all agree that the real problem is the shortage of TSA screeners. More people need to get hired and trained so security lines can stay open and people can move through the checkpoints faster. In the meantime, there are immediate steps we need to take in Chicago. First, we're going to get 58 more TSA screening officers in the next two weeks and 224 by August. That's about a 15% increase in TSA staff. It's a good start. O'Hare will also receive five K-9 teams. They, that will double the number of K-9s we have at the airport. Two teams were brought in yesterday and the rest will arrive within five days. These bomb-sniffing dogs do important work. They check carry-on baggage. If there's no problem, the passengers can move out of the standard line into the expedited line. These dogs can help us speed up the process by allowing up to 5,000 additional passengers a day to move through the faster security lines. There will also be a shift of 100 TSA staff from part-time to full-time status so people can be on deck to help with the lines. And officers who currently work on non-direct security functions are going to be called to pitch in and help the officers at the checkpoints. <clears throat> We're also working to get more people enrolled in TSA PreCheck. I can't emphasize enough how important that is. If you are a regular traveler, for $85 you can buy, or at least apply for, and be given a TSA PreCheck status for five years. PreCheck lines can scan nearly twice as fast as the ordinary lines. Customers don't have to wait as long or remove their shoes, belts, or light jackets. We need to make sure more people are hearing about this option and signing up for it as quickly as possible. TSA is now working on a mobile app to help people get enrolled while they're waiting in lines, and they're also looking into lowering pre-check sign-up costs by competing out the actual uh, function of signing up for pre-check. Pre-check has gotten a lot of traction, especially in Chicago. This past month alone, 5,700 new enrollments. I hope we can continue to quickly expand this program so more can help. The airlines have to be part of the solution as well. I'm glad that Senator Blumenthal of Connecticut is on the floor because both he and Senator Markey of Massachusetts spoke out early on this aspect that I'm about to address. Airlines can help us by reducing high wait times, especially during the peak summer season. I've joined my colleagues, Senator Blumenthal and Senator Markey, urging the airlines to suspend the check bag fees a lot of people are dragging their bags on the airplanes because they don't want to pay to have them checked. When I spoke with Secretary Johnson on Monday, he told me baggage fees are contributing to long lines because more people are carrying on luggage that should be carefully screened through check-in. Over the last year, the volume of passengers and personnel passing through security checkpoints has increased 7 percent, while the number of checked bags has only increased 3 percent. That tells the story. More people are carrying on their luggage and it's causing problems as more travelers pack their roller bags to the brim, making the bags even longer to be, uh, taking longer to be scanned. Waiving the check baggage fee during the summer travel season can reduce the incentive for passengers to carry on luggage and it can help speed up the process. Let me also add that it's in the baggage that people are dragging on board that TSA screeners are finding things that aren't supposed to be on an airplane. Last year, they found 2,653 firearms. 83% of them were loaded. Most of them were from one state. I won't name it. 
<clears throat> but by and large, we have to be more mindful of the fact that this stops the process or at least slows it down. I'm convening a meeting with Administrator Neffinger tomorrow, along with state and local officials and the airlines at Chicago O'Hare, and then we're also going to be visiting the Midway Airport. We will see firsthand what the passengers are experiencing and what the response is. We have got to stop this meltdown when it comes to airport security. But let me close by saying this. The news today about Egypt Air was a grim reminder that we still live in a very dangerous world. The role and responsibility of the Transportation Security Agency is to make sure that uh, when we travel and our families travel, we come off those planes just as safely as we went on. It's an important security responsibility. Yes, it's an irritation and a frustration, but we need to do it in this dangerous world to make sure that we stop people from using their carry-on baggage and other sources to cause harm to innocent people. So I stand behind TSA and its mission, but what happened in Chicago is unacceptable. This meltdown should have been avoided. There should have been better management, more screeners, and we should have been ready for the surge in passengers. We're going to make that right this week, beginning this week, and I hope that the visit of the TSA administrator tomorrow will be the beginning of a conversation that will not only help our airports in Chicago, but help the nation.